Hi, welcome back for solving polynomials, uh, factoring polynomials rather. Today we're going to talk about solving polynomial equations. Um, in my previous video about trinomials, I showed you how to factor them. And in this video here, we're going to talk about how to solve a polynomial equation that was a trinomial, which it could be in its polynomial form, factored form. We're going to take a look at all of that. So I have six problems here for us today to take a close look at. Now, First step in solving a polynomial equation, step one, is to set the equations equal to zero. When I look at these two equations, problem one, problem two, both are clearly set equal to zero. I see equal zero, I see equal zero. So that's step one, it's actually already done. Step two is to factor. Now, we don't see a trinomial here. We clearly see that a trinomial is already put into factored form. Noting the parentheses gives you that big indicator. Same thing with problem two. This is clearly in factored form. So step one, set the equation equal to zero. That's already done for us. Step two, factor. It's also already done for us. Step three is to set each factor pair equal to zero and solve. So in this case, I would set x plus four equal to zero, and I would set x minus three equal to zero. I would then do my solving. This is just a nice friendly one-step equation. I get my first solution of negative 4. When I set x minus 3 equal to 0 and I solve for x, I get x equals 3. I'm going to list my two solutions together in a set of braces, not parentheses, because if I use parentheses, it'll look like an ordered pair. And really what this is saying is if I was to plug in negative 4 back into the equation, I have to take negative 4 and plug them back in here. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 0 times negative 7, which I would get if I plug that negative 4 in here, 0 times negative 7 is 0. I'd get that same response if I plugged in a 3. The moment I put in a 3, 3 times, I'm sorry, 3 minus 3 is 0. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 times 0 is 0. I get that same response. These are the two solutions. So those are the two solutions that actually give me a true statement and give me zero as a result. Same thing. Set each factor pair equal to zero. If it's x plus 6 and I set it equal to zero, I get x equals negative 6. If I set x plus 7 equal to zero and I subtract 7 on both sides, I get my negative 7. And those would be the two values of x that if I was to substitute them back into the original equation would give me zero as a result. Problems three and four. Problems three and four, when I look at this and I think about my three-step process, step one, set the equation equal to zero. Both of these are clearly already set equal to zero. So that doesn't seem to be an issue. Step two, factor. It's very clear to look at these now and compare them to the previous problems and note that these are definitely not in factored form. I don't see my parentheses. They just look like they're trinomials in standard form. So I need to factor. For problem three, look at my C value of positive 10. I have to think, what numbers multiply to get 10 that add up to give me a negative seven? One and 10? No. Two times five? Yes. What kind of two and five would I need so that they add up to get negative seven? A negative two and a negative five. Negative two and negative five add to get this negative seven and they multiply to get positive 10. Once I have my trinomial now in factored form, I do what I did in the previous two steps, previous two problems rather. I set each factor pair equal to zero, and when I solve, I get two and five as my results. x squared plus five x plus six equals zero. The equation is set equal to zero, but I need to factor. Factor pair of six, that gives me five. Well, six and one will get me a five but the one would have to be negative. And if I multiply six times a negative one, I would need that to be a negative six, not a positive six. My other factor pair of six is two and three. If it's a positive two and a positive three, those will add to get positive five. Okay, two and three will add to get positive five and they will multiply to get six. I set each factor pair equal to zero. I solve for x and I get my two solutions. I hope you're doing well with me right now. Last two problems. x squared minus 3x equals 18. 
You would say to yourself, first step is to set the equation equal to zero. And clearly here, it is not set equal to zero. The right mindset for setting an equation equal to zero is to send all of the terms to wherever the highest exponent is, as long as you have a nice positive coefficient, leading coefficient. So here, I wanna send that positive 18 to the other side of the equation, and I need it to be in standard form. So my equation would become x squared minus 3x, and if I subtract 18 on both sides, I get negative 18, I'm sorry, minus 18 equals zero. Now I've got my trinomial equation set equal to zero. Step two, factor. Factor pairs of 18, that will multiply to get a negative 18, but add up to get a negative three. One and 18, no. Two and nine, no. Three and six, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. I would need a positive three and a negative six. A positive three and a negative six. These two numbers will add up to get negative three and they will multiply to get negative 18. I set each factor pair equal to zero. So at this point, this really becomes super routine. You know exactly what to expect and then we're good. Last one, x squared equals five x plus six. Now your thought may be to send over the x squared, but we really wanna send everything to where the highest exponent is. So it would be x squared, then minus five x, minus six equals zero. When I send that positive five x and positive six over to the other side, it becomes negative. Now I go to factor. I need two numbers to multiply to get negative six, but add up to get negative five. Let's try one and six. If I use one and six and I make one of them negative, the six negative, a positive one and a negative six will in fact add up to get negative five and they'll multiply to get negative six. If I was to use negative two and negative three, a negative two and negative three would add up to get negative five, but they would multiply to get a positive six. So that actually won't work. We set each one equal to zero. This is now our sixth time doing this process. We solve and we get our solutions. And as always, I could always go back, substitute these numbers in for x, see that I get a true statement, and know that I did everything correctly. I hope this video was helpful for you. Hopefully you were able to follow along and hopefully you turn in for, tune in for more videos. Thanks.